All right, so I want to talk a little bit about pests um, because we're talking about welcome to Florida. So we, we do live in the swamp, right? Um, it's weird. We're like a mixture between the swamp and the desert. Like we get like both extremes here. So we used to have a lot of dunes here. If you go to the uh, to the arboretum, you'll see some of the dunes that remain. We used to have some really big dunes over in the Regency area, which got um, removed, unfortunately, several years ago. Um, but if you were to look at the globe and you look across over to Africa, we're like pretty much in line with the Sahara. So if, if, if climate ever shifts and we get less rain, I mean, we are on par with becoming a desert very easily. We already have the sand. Um, so, so we have the extreme, uh, the ex the extreme uh, conditions on occasion. So the insects take advantage of our plants um, when they're stressed out, okay? So I talked about how the plants emit the chemicals and the insects pick up on that and that's how they find them a lot of times. So I do have some natural um, pest killers and what I'm relying on here with these particular products um, is actually biology again. So we're using microbes, okay, bacterias, um, to actually ward off and kill funguses and also certain types of insects that attack our plants. So I have um, a product called Bacillus thuringiensis, which they call BT. Um, this is a bacterium. And if you are a vegetable gardener, um, good luck here in Florida. Um, there is a steep learning curve. So if you've grown, you, uh, where I grew up in Indiana, you can literally spit a tomato seed on the ground and you'll have a, a big lush plant by summertime full of tomatoes. Here, here in Northeast Florida, growing tomatoes is definitely not an entry level course. Um, I would highly recommend starting with cherry tomatoes. They're a lot easier. But we do have a lot of vegetables like, like uh, peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, um, cucumbers, different squashes that caterpillars enjoy just as much as we do. And so if the caterpillars are out of control and you can't hand pick them fast enough, um, I would recommend using the BT. Um, usually under 12 hours, the caterpillars are under control. You usually have to use it once a week because we get so much rain that it washes the bacteria away. Yes, ma'am. How is that um, for lover grasshoppers, the lovers? Grasshoppers, let me address grasshoppers here in a minute. They're a different category of insect for sure. They're like more like a tank than they are an insect. Um, but this will, this will, this will get rid of the caterpillars. Now, this is uh, called Spinosad. The bacterium um, was actually discovered by a corporation. So now they have a patented name on, of course, right, for a bacterium rather than the scientific name, but they call it Spinosad. So it was actually, I can't remember which Caribbean island, but there were some old rum vats and the scientists went in and they were analyzing what was in the bottom. And they actually found this bacteria growing in the bottom of an old uh, rum vat. So of course, being ingenious Americans, we, we bottled it. And now we have this bacterium that's called Spinosad, otherwise known as Captain Jack's <laughs> dead bug brew. Okay, so you got Captain Jack here with his Panama hat on and his Hawaiian shirt. Um, but it, they have actually found that there are several other insect pests um, above and beyond caterpillars that this helps control, like spider mites, which are a big problem, leaf miners, which leave the little squiggly lines and destroy our leaves, um, a couple other uh, common insect pests. So this is another bacterium that we can use against the insects. And then I have a couple um, very mild but effective uh, solutions for fungus as well. So the serenade, which is going to be harder for me to find, I'm just going to tell you that right now, it hasn't been selling well, so my distributor, I think, is going to be discontinuing it. However, if you remember the name Serenade, you should be able to find it online. This is another bacteria that eats fungus. Believe it or not, there's a bacteria that eats fungus. So you can get this in bulk as well. So if you want to spray it on your lawn, you can literally spray bacteria on your lawn to either prevent or stop the spread of funguses, so the brown patch, and the different types of fungal disease that attacks your lawn and garden. Um, you can spray the serenade on and literally put the bacteria to work to eat away at the fungus before it gets out of control. But with any of these products, I really look at it more as a preventative maintenance, because sometimes by the time you have a problem, it grows and spreads so quickly, it's really hard to get ahead of it, especially with our moist climate, with how much rain we have. So when the temperatures start getting warm, when you're comfortable wearing shorts outside and when it's starting to feel balmy and muggy, that's when the funguses are in prime time. It's warm enough to where they can grow so fast that you could be out there the night before and the next morning you're, you're seeing fungus that wasn't there the night before, okay? So you start seeing moths flying around your lamp at night. You know that the caterpillars are coming, okay? It's starting to get muggy outside. You know the funguses are gonna be 
present, all right, or at least very active in their growth. So that's the time you would start using these products, sometimes even before you see the problem occurring. That way you can keep from having giant patches of lawn that you have to replace or shrubs that just drop all their leaves in a very short period of time and you either have to replace them or wait for them to come back. And then the last product is just basically copper. We have copper. Copper is a natural um, fungicide. It's very mild but effective. Um, it's in a liquid concentrate here. I also have it pre-mixed. You can have it in squirt bottles. Um, but it's blue. Copper is naturally blue. But a lot of our common um, uh, fungal diseases can be arrested and um, you can stop the spread of them once you start seeing spots. Powdery mildew, um, the black molds that grow on your plants, things like that. This will stop their uh, development on your plant. Yes. So all these are okay to use even before you see? Anything? Correct. Correct. So when I was vegetable gardening at my peak, I had about 1,200 square feet in production in my backyard. And I learned very quickly that if I didn't use some of these things preventatively, once they took hold, I, I would lose an entire crop. I'd have like a 20 foot row of cucumbers. I'd go to bed at night, they looked fine. The next morning they were covered in powdery mildew and I couldn't keep them clean. Um, so I would use them ahead of that. So once I kind of learned that in, in advance, I knew that the fungal spores were out there, that they were going to be growing any moment now. So I would use them before I even saw a problem to keep those fungal spores from taking hold. So funguses move through the air. Um, they have a reproductive system to where they have little spores like dust or like pollen. They float in the air, they land on something moist and sticky, which is like a leaf, all right? So our most susceptible vegetables are those fuzzy leaf plants, which are a lot of them, and they have little fine neck -like hairs on them. And at night, when the dew falls, they're moist, the fungal spores land on that, they stick, and then they, they start, they have a very fast reproductive system and they, and, they, and they take over very quickly. So um, the sooner that we use these, the more often that we use these. I would use them almost once a week, which sounds like a bit of a chore. Um, but if you don't have 1,200 square feet in production, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but I was, it was almost like a part-time job trying in, in our worst seasons trying to keep some of those growing. But I loved cucumbers and I loved pickles and uh, I, I did what it took to, to grow them. And you can grow them here, but if you have grown vegetable gardens in the north, just know, bite off a little bit at a time. Don't do what I did and, and create a 30 by 30 uh, vegetable garden right out of the gate. Start with like a four by eight box, something a little bit more manageable, and then add more as time passes. So master a few plants, learn how to grow those, add a few more each season, um, because there's definitely a learning curve. And then you, again, you could do everything right, and then you have a month of rain and everything's underwater. So, um, so even sometimes our best efforts, um, it's, a, it's a lesson in humility for sure. Uh, I, I thank all of our Florida farmers for what they do and providing food for us because it is not, a, not an easy job. Patience, but I'm here all year round and you guys can uh, ask me questions if you want to put together a native and Florida friendly garden anytime. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Earthworks is also providing a $500 gift card to the winner of the Outstanding River Friendly Yard Award Contest. It's a contest promoted by the St. John's River Keepers Organization. 